Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Before I get into this video, I would quickly like to uh, tell you guys that this actually is not uh, over-exaggerated or clickbait. Um, uh, this actually could be a rare occurrence, in, for August at least. I mean, some of the models are hinting at some ridiculously chilly temperatures for August. I mean possibly record lows but uh you know nevertheless consider subscribing to this channel consider liking the video it helps this channel grow and um i would you know really really appreciate it if you left a comment down below as well so uh we are now uh looking at the gfs model let's go back to our zero and we are looking again at the global forecasting system you can see, as of right now, there is a little bit of warmth, actually. there was a, You can see a little bit of warm air across the central, central part of the country. Nothing too remarkable, uh, nothing too uh, ridiculous. There was no heat warnings, no heat advisories, but it was a little bit warm. However, in California, again, southwest, it's, it's pretty dang hot there. Everybody seems to be boiling down there, but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty hot down there, but... If you were to look up at the rest of the United States, nothing too ridiculous, but notice how there's a cool blast, and this will occur through, start on Monday, tomorrow actually, across a good chunk of the country, and then it'll move into the southeast, so if you live again in Tennessee, Arkansas, Alabama, Mississippi, possibly northern Persians, um, the, maybe not the extreme southeast, but if you live in the eastern United States, you, most of you will feel the chill, except the far northeast and far southeast. Um, this one isn't going to be too big in terms of magnitude, but you can see it kind of sticks around. This GFS may be a little bit underdoing the warmth. I don't think it will be really below average at this time. I think there actually could be a, a window of opportunity where around Saturday, August 3rd, like the beginning couple of days of August, the 1st through the 4th, maybe a little bit of warmth. Um, not terribly above average, but a little bit of warmth. But then we see this uh, more impressive lobe of chillier air come in and you can see that this definitely brings things down and see that even parts of the southeast i mean the southeast will even get onto this um ex ex uh, again maybe not the extreme southeast meaning maybe not georgia and florida but most of the southeast like tennessee north carolina parts of south carolina northern portions of alabama most of mississippi arkansas louisiana Oklahoma and northern Texas could all be uh, looking for a pretty chilly uh, uh, pretty chilly uh, Friday and Thursday. You could see it reaches there, but that's not it. You could see as soon as it may seem like this one's moving away, we have another one coming, and this is Saturday, August 10th now. You could see that it's still very chilly. Look at that. Some of those anomalies are fairly significant for you to go to here. That's negative 12 to negative 60, negative 20 easily. Then you may seem it may seem like it starts moderating, but also notice how there's a second batch over here and that's as far as it goes so notice how the gfs just continuously puts out wave after wave of cold and chilly air and some of this will downright be pretty pretty chilly if we were to look at a two meter temperature shaded and let's just go stay from hour zero just to go from you know hour one and take you so right now again there was a little bit of warmth uh it's, frankly some temperatures were above uh, above average but notice nothing too terribly um hot obviously in the south um it was um uh, it was seasonable in terms of that it was around average maybe a bit warmer but uh nothing unbearable no heat waves Notice how this is now Monday, we get a little bit of a chill, 70s and 60s across the north during the nights, 40s start appearing across North Dakota and Minnesota, that is completely, um, that is completely, at this time of the year, normal to see 40s and 50s during the nights across northern Minnesota, uh, North Dakota and Wisconsin, and if we were to go even further, notice how this day, Wednesday, July 31st, it's pretty darn chilly across much of the Midwest and Northeast, 60s, 60s, 70s, uh, some uh, 80s, and then a little bit warmer and actually fairly warm towards California. Um, that's like the only region, the Southwest, that will be Nevada, uh, Arizona, Utah, and California. The Kind of like the, the Southwest states will be above average in a considerable way. Otherwise, you could see during the night, 50s, 40s again, uh, and notice how it gets down into the southeast. Look, 
this is uh, during the morning, morning hours. Um, this is basically good enough to even open up the windows for a couple of a uh, couple of hours in the morning time. Look at that, 60, 71, 73, 76. Um, maybe you know if the humidity is a little bit high, that's a little bit too much, but definitely around Kentucky, Tennessee, 60s, almost 50s, definitely a cool enough to open up the windows for at least a few hours before you know it warms up during the day. But no, look at that, uh, 90s, that's warm, but then look at that. Uh, much chillier, un unseasonably cool for these areas. And as soon as it seems like you know it's oh, it's, it's dwindling, no more the heat's coming back. You have another pretty big blast right there. And just notice how it never really bounces back into the 80s across these areas. It literally stays at 70. Um, for a good chunk of this country, maybe some 80s towards the south, but generally below average, really below average over here, and also pretty above average for the southwest. You gotta point that out. And I won't be making a separate video, but I just want to tell you guys that if you live in the southwest or even parts of the west, it seems like this pattern change will not affect you. It seems California, Arizona, around the uh, around the border with Arizona and California, it seems like. Uh, it will it will be it will be ruthless. It will be very very warm, and that uh, is uh, basically bound to happen at this point. Um, that's like the only area again that will be unseasonably warm. Look at that. Uh, very. I mean, look at look at all those greens. You usually don't see this typically in August, unless again it's something occurs like this where it's way below average. These anomalies are ridiculously cold for this time of the year, and uh, some records could be set. And notice, look at that cold front right there, 60s all the way down into Arkansas, um, uh, Kentucky, maybe not 60s, but a, a lower 70s, 60s up to towards the Northeast. And look at look at that right there. Um, again, this is not the U.S., but uh, by I think so. This is British Columbia. This is Alberta, and this is Saskatchewan. So across these provinces, look at that, uh, 40s. Almost, uh, there was one, I think, 39 I saw. No, but 40, 41. Uh, so almost, uh, you know, almost, basically almost a, a, uh, all, very, all, eight degrees away from a freeze, which is definitely not, uh, which is definitely not a lot. And it won't be that cold here. Uh, definitely not, but... It, you know, it will get unseasonably chilly. You could see during the nights, um, possibly the upper 40s across North Dakota. That's, you know, that's, you know, that doesn't usually um, take that long for those areas to see cold. But it's going to be definitely be uh, accelerated this year. And uh, you could see that across... Uh, the mountains as well, pretty chilly, um, but, you know, the mountains are usually chillier. But notice how towards a long-range forecast, towards a longer period, it seems like California southwest may cool off just a bit, but the southeast may warm up just a tad. But, I mean, I'm telling you guys that if you live in the southeast, this is going to be the only area. It's going to be something like this, okay, the cooler air. So, I would say a good portion of this, anywhere you live in there, pretty good chance you'll be print, you'll be cool for the next several weeks. If you live, I would say, in this region, this region, there's a 50-50, maybe colder slash warmer on some days. And if you live south of that, um, you know, you, you probably will be in the warmer side of things, above average, frankly. But uh, definitely the southeast, if you live in the very, very far southeast, North Carolina, South Carolina, I don't think that, you know, you'll be in the hot the whole time. Notice how during the during the night, the temperatures get, they get seasonable, 60s, 70s that's you know that's pretty nice in my opinion but again it, it seems like it, they could things could start warming up for them towards the end of the forecasting period and if you were to look at uh, the 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 climate prediction center 8 to 14 day outlook august 5th through 11th they're also showing what i basically outlined for you below average temperatures for a good chunk neutral so like a 50 50 and then they're showing a little bit above average for florida this parts extreme southeast maybe like the cape cod of massachusetts um long island and then parts of texas arizona and then the west otherwise the the central part of the country seems uh, to be rather chilly and more of a focus, especially along Indiana, Ohio, and Illinois. So definitely, sorry about that. So definitely some, uh, some you know, alarming anomalies that I would just like to, you know, to bring attention to. So now I want to quickly bring attention to the European model. The European model, uh, honestly, has been all over the place. It has been once showing cool, once warm. Now it's showing warm again, or at least warmer than the GFS. But I want to explain to you why uh, this this isn't right. 
So I'd like to bring attention now to the European models. So if you look at what they're showing right now, there's a cool off right there across Monday, Tuesday. And we could tell that basically there's a trough. The middle balls, middle bars are uh, focusing down and then up. The cooler air is rushed in. Uh, then they're showing more of a warming pattern. You can see no, no terrible heat wave, but more of a high, uh, a high pressure right there. Uh, centered right there a little bit to the west but uh, right there and it's spinning and you can see that it's uh, producing this heat but I'm telling you why this is not right is because if you were to look at the previous model run of the European uh, you can see that it's, it was actually showing a pretty chilly dive towards the end of the two, 240 hour period a chilly uh, blast of air what did you exactly what the GFS was showing if you look at the 12z the model run before that they were showing something even further drastic and that's what I'm saying guys that uh, you got to look at consistency consistency is a fairly important part of, uh, of these models and the European model right now is kind of all over the place that's why the climate prediction center if they were to look at the European European model th this would not be like the way it is so um, that's why this is below average because they're more towards it, leaning towards the GFS and as well as I am uh, if you were to look at the ensembles this is not the just GFS the GEFS ensembles are also showing some uh, some great uh, anomalies of cooler temperatures look at that potential trough building right there that's pretty significant if this were to actually form this would again bring very chilly temperatures around the first to two weeks of August so uh, that's basically it guys I just wanted to give you a quick update hopefully you enjoyed hope you learned something new and I'll catch you all guys on the next episode see ya